Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, back for another video, and this is episode number... Okay, I'm running out of clues. <clears throat> Remember this number, seven. Okay, seven. Now look on your phone and see what the high predicted high is today and add seven to it. Predicted high is 91, and 7 would be 98. So this is video number 98. Thank you, dear. Very good. He's run out of clues, and yet numbers are ad infinitum. You can always have one more. <laughs> it's the clues he's running out of. I'm back. I hope you all had a nice 4th of July. We did. Um, we didn't go out and watch fireworks, but I watched them via my daughter's careful that's hot thank you hot coffee um via my daughter's facetime the city of jacksonville has seven locations that they shoot off fireworks and plus you can you can shoot them off in your neighborhood but um a lot of people go to the city ones and my daughter they were hanging out at the baseball field because one of the locations for fireworks was right close to there so she was FaceTiming, and so I got to see it. just like a show. It was really cool. Anyway, um, it's hot here. It's Florida. Um, 91 is probably lower than it has been. We have had highs in the upper 90s. But it's humid, so it feels hotter than that. So anyway, I'm going to talk about what I've been stitching, but I'm also going to do a mid-year whip parade. It's not really... A total whip parade because I do have some things that I'm not gonna show that don't have a lot of stitching on them maybe a start on a border and so I've kind of left some of those out not that I don't want to stitch them I do but um, and I'm not giving up on them I watched a video that I did at the beginning of 2021 and it was a whip parade and a lot of those same pieces are in the same place as far as the amount of stitching that they were at two and a half years ago. So I, like I said, I don't want to give up on them, but the ones I'm going to show you today are the ones I want to concentrate on. And then gradually I want to add in, as I finish something, I want to add in one of those ones that doesn't have a lot of um, progress. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So first of all, I'll start with what I've been stitching. I had an, I started something new on 4th of July. It was not patriotic. I'm kind of over and finished with patriotic, although I love it and I could do it year round. And I'm not quite ready for fall. <clears throat> so I, I really want to concentrate on getting some of my whips finished. Um, when I did go through that old video, I think out of maybe 25 pieces I only had like six that I have finished now I've finished other things that I started and finished in the same year but as far as carryover I didn't have that many that I had finished so I just really need to finish some of these whips I'm not getting any younger and you really you aren't either <laughs> so <laughs> and I said once before when I say something is finished in a certain year, that's the year I finish it. It's not necessarily the year that I started it. It's just like a baby that's maybe conceived in one year and isn't born until the following year. We don't talk about anything but when they were born. So this is when they are finished. They will be called a finish for that year. <clears throat> Hope all that makes sense. So... Um, my new start, and this was partially influenced by Christy from Daisy Case Primitives. I love watching her. I love her decorating. She's kind of my decorating inspiration. I love her colonial primitive look. And this particular piece just fits well into that um, decor. And this is Carriage House Sampler Stocking. There's a number of these stockings. I think I have about four or five charts. I think there's actually a couple that I don't have, but I would love to finish all of them. And they're not like stockings necessarily that you would only hang at Christmas time. They're just 
you know, they kind of could add to primitive decor. I could hang them, you know, like on the side here. It's just, I love them. So I started the sampler stocking. And this whole part up here, the alphabet, is eyelet stitches. So I kind of, not cheated, but I wanted to get down a little further. And then I could go back and finish some of the eyelets as I go. So I'm down to the bottom where the bird, and then I'm ready for another band here that's exactly the same as that band. So then as I go, I'm gonna go back and do, you know, eyelet row by row, so that when I finish the eyelets. Now in this particular piece, I started on the right side because the stocking is gonna curve around. So if you started here, You'd either have to make it go the other way, which would be a little challenging. This is a fat quarter of vintage meadow rue from Lakeside. And that is where I am. And I am using, I love the color of this linen too. I'm using the NPI silks, Carriage House, Kathy Barrick. They're all related. Um, Carriage House is actually Marty Barrick, who is Kathy's sister, and then Liz Matthews is Kathy's daughter. So it's all in all that talent is in one family. So these are the colors of the NPI. NPI stands for Needlepoint Silk. NPI meaning Needlepoint Incorporated. NPS is another way that they express it, and that's Needlepoint Silk. So anyway, I'm loving it, and I want to get more done on that very soon so when i say i want to get back to these we could make it a drinking game i have coffee so i don't know if coffee is something that you would use for a drinking game but hey another thing if i can and i have a cabinet in my sewing room not my long arm room but my sewing room where my sewing machine and my cutting table my wall of fabric is all in there and um i have a cabinet and it has doors that open and i put all my whips in there and most all of them are in project bags some of them are just the plastic project bags some are the ziploc project bags. but i actually like to keep it the unzipped when i store them because i like the linen to be able to breathe um I don't know if linen really breathes. <laughs> I don't hear it inhale and exhale, but who knows, it could. So the next thing I picked up um, in an effort to get back to some of my whips, I picked up this one, which is by Needlework Press. This is the Mary Argent sampler. This came from Country Sampler as a kit. It was one of the pieces in one of the clubs and they've named the club different every year. So I can't really tell you whether it was threads of history or the girl sampler girl club or um, stitches through time. I'm not sure what it was called, but this is definitely from country sampler. It has a lot of Brown and I recently saw someone had stitched this and actually changed the house color to more of a red. Now, personally, I would, if I was going to change it, I probably would change it to more of a autumn red. Not necessarily orange, but more of an autumn red. And that came with the um, overdyed cottons, which is what I'm using. And there are a few... So, we already have... Um, terracotta which to me would be a good color for the house so I may switch the house color too we'll see when I get to that so there's the colors it's not all brown even though the picture kind of looks like it's all brown this is in a project bag I'm not sure where I got it if I know where I got them I might I might be able to tell you but I'm not sure I should, I'm remiss, I should put the name when somebody, either I buy it or someone gifts me a project bag, I should put the name in there. But somehow I haven't. So I either need to start that 
And I've made some of them myself. So the last time I showed this, I, um, hold on here, I've got a needle in. Don't want to have a hanging thread. The last time I showed this, I just had a little bit of the border done. Well, I went all the way around on the border and I started on that first tree, which is kind of a chocolate brown. So I still need to do the flowers on the border. And I actually did a couple flowers. Let me see. Maybe I didn't. I thought I did. Yeah, I did. And they're kind of a pinkish, you can see right there. And this is a uh, 35 count straw by weeks. So that's the next thing I worked on. And I have kind of been, I don't know what the word is, but I get to a certain point and I think, oh, I'm kind of bored with this and then I switch. And I need to have that sense of perseverance <laughs> to kind of either have one project to alternate. So if I do get a little bored, I can switch to another one rather than jumping all over the place. Cause I've kind of been guilty of Kind of being a gypsy. <laughs> I hope that doesn't offend any gypsies out there. But I've been like, I travel around and I think, oh, let's stick on this one for a while. Let's camp here for a while. And I think in Britain they call them travelers. Uh, that's kind of what I've been as a traveler. Adventurer. Oh, adventurer. There I am. <laughs> that's a kind way of saying it. The next piece I worked on, and I pulled this out for a Sunday stitch. Not this past Sunday, but Sunday before. This is one that I've, I had a start on it. And I had not worked on this in a couple years, so I picked it up. This is Peaceful Paradise by Midsummer Night Designs. I got this at the attic, and I, the only time I went to the attic was in 2019. So I'm not sure if I purchased it before that because I saw it on a, in a picture on the wall or whether I purchased it when I was there. But it was definitely one that they had the model on the wall and I loved it. And so I got the pattern. And um, recently in the Saltbox Stitcher Weekly Sampler post along the hashtag on Instagram, if you're not following that, you should be because there's some fabulous samplers that have been posted, just fabulous, and it's very ins inspirational. Well, somebody had finished this one, and I, I'm sorry I don't remember who it was, but it, it made me want to get this back out again, so I did. And like I said, I pulled it out on a Sunday, and then I ended up working on it for like four days. So I did get some done on it. I'm using the combination of overdyed cottons and DMC. It takes a lot of thread. And it's pretty colorful. And it's actually the, um, it's the 23rd Psalm and some other um, scriptures. But this side is like a sunrise and this side is like a nighttime. And then it kind of looks like two tablets and then it has the scene at the bottom. I'm, I'm really excited to work on this some more. I, I really want to, because once I get into the letters, it's not really going to be that tedious because letters go fast in my opinion. So what I had done prior to this, and this is on, um, 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 I will tell you what this is on. I'm pretty sure this is on, uh, it's either 36 or 40. 36 kind of used to be my go-to, and then now my go-to is more 40. But I still have a lot of projects that are on 36, and I just use one strand on 36, so... I know there are people that use two strands on 36. It just depends on the coverage you want. My friend Susan Aki, she uses two strands on 36. So, um, whoops, sorry. I don't need to take a moment to breathe. 
I kind of do that involuntarily. Okay, so here's where I am. And prior to this, I had one section of the checkerboard that goes around. So I'm working on the angel on her other wing. I have the sunrise. And so um, we have a retreat. It's just a local retreat. Um, it's open to other people. It's not just my stitching group, but it's a local retreat in the first week in August. So I'll take a piece like this so that I can fill in all of the blue sky behind the sun, Mr. Sunshine. And again, that's the colors. Lots of, it's pretty colorful. And there's actually a purple in here. <gasps> there's two purples. Lord have mercy. I'm living on the edge. Not a fan of purple. Although, it, it's okay. So, when I got that one out, then I was reminded, because I had this next piece in the same bag. Did I say what that linen was? I started talking about it and said it was 36 count. I think it's exemplar from Lakeside. And the next piece that I got out, it's kind of in the same vein, is Seven Days of Creation by Plum Street. And this one again looks like two tablets and it has the day and night down here. I'm not sure if this is still available. I would think so, but it is not a new pattern by any means. And this one I'm using the NPI silks. And I'm stitching this one on vintage. I take that back. I'm not sure if it's vintage. Let me look on my tag here. Yes, vintage light exemplar. Crunch, crunch. And this is where I am. So I'm pretty far down the first, the first tablet. And this is seven days of creation. So it's, you know, in the beginning. So this is about, I, it's a little more than halfway. So it comes down to about here. So that'll be a fun one to finish. Let me tell you the, hold on, the stitch count. This is one of those bags we love to hate and it's very crinkly. Oh, I'm further than that. I'm down to here. So about three fourths of the way down the first. So this is another whip. You can count if you want. I didn't count them. Um, the count, stitch count is 227 wide by 362. So it's going to be 20 inches long if I'm using 36. And how do I figure that? If it's 360 and it's 36 count, you're gonna get one stitch every every 18 threads. 18 doubled is 36. So it's 360 divided by 18 is 20. So math. So I'm enjoying that one and I definitely want to get back to that. And then the next thing I picked up, see I was kind of going here to there, here to there. But these are the, whatever, one, two, one, two, three, four, five things I've worked on in the last two weeks. And this one I'm gonna work on until it's finished because I'm making good progress. This is the Brick House Sampler by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This is actually charted to be stitched over one. And I decided, to do it on, I, at first I thought I had 
pulled a piece of 46, but it's actually 40, but it's a tight 40, so it actually measures 42. But I had gotten a little bit done on the, the vine or the branch that's underneath. And I think I only had one or two flowers. So I finished the vine. And this is actually a piece I cut off of a sampler, a scrap. But this is um, 40 or 42. There is no 42, but it measures 42. 40 count sand dune by Lakeside. And this is where I am on that one. So I'm working on the house. As you can see, I've put in some of the bricks. And this side is just a mirror image. There's a bird up here. There's a lot of, a lot more stuff. But I'm making good progress. And this one, I don't, oh, now I have threads all over me. Duh. <laughs> Story of my life. I always have threads all over me. So I don't want to put this away till it's done. So I'm just going to keep going, going, going. And that will eliminate one of the whips in the whip pile. Okay, then I have two chairs worth of whips here. If I remember the project bag, I will tell you the maker of the project bag. If I don't, I won't. <laughs> it's that simple. Okay. Um, these aren't in any sort of order. And I do in my like notes and things, not notes for this video, but my notes that I keep, I do have when I started them. But I'm not going to necessarily share that today because I didn't write all that down for the video. This is Maria Finney, 1832, Adam and Eve's House by Shakespeare's Peddler. This came out a few years ago. I'm not sure if this was a club kit or not. But I recently saw this again on either on someone's wall or on the sampler, Saltbox Stitcher, Weekly Sampler Post Along, hashtag, um, somebody had finished this and I thought, oh, I need to get that out. I really like that. Um, the threads are pretty neutral. There's a light blue and a kind of a cream color and the rest are all kind of greens, tans, and browns. But I sort of like some of those occasionally on your wall it makes it looks very antique to me so this is odd that I started it this way but I started up in the left corner went around and I usually then go back and to the top but I didn't for some reason I don't know if I just wanted to see if it would fit on this piece of linen I don't know this is um, 30 no this is 40 count straw by weeks I think. I'm pretty sure it's 40 count. It could be 36. There again, you know, a lot of them I started on 36. Or kits I used to get at 36. So that is Maria Finney. The next one that I want to show you is a blackbird. This is Maria Selby Humphrey. I'm not sure if this book is still available. I would think so, but not 100% sure. So when they charted this one, they did not stitch the reproduction. They just pictured the antique in the book. Look at some of those stitches. <laughs> and we worry. Oh my, my. Sarah Humph Maria Selby Humphrey, 1831. I have quite a bit finished on this, and this I'm using the um, overdyed cottons, another one that's about the same colors as Maria Finney, in that it has a tan, some greens, a little bit of blue, creams. I don't know, does it help when we do this? Sometimes I think it does. It's got some gold. This one I've really jumped around. The very bottom row of the border is uh, satin stitch. And I started that, but 
A lot of times when it's satin stitch, I would prefer to leave that till the end. I don't use a hoop, but still just in the motion of holding the piece, the satin stitch, you know, there's a possibility, it, because they're long stitches, there's a possibility you could catch it, you know, whatever. The, um, this is on 40 count. I think this is vintage light exemplar. And again, this is one that people have finished in the um, post along. For some reason, this one kind of is fall-ish to me. So I'm down, I started the, um, the roof on the house. And yes, I know I have a mistake. I spelled common, C-O-N-M-O-N, -O -N, so I need to take that out. But I am aware of it, so when I pick it up again, I'll fix that. But I love this, these like diamonds at the top. Aren't those cool? So another one that I definitely want to get back to, take a drink. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But fun, very fun. The next one, and I worked on this some at the beginning of the year, but I haven't worked on it for a while. And this one is the Adam and Eve sampler by the City Stitcher. I'm not sure if 1884 Stitchery has reprinted this one or not. I don't know if they own the rights to City Stitcher. But she certainly might have, um, might have some of these. This one is, oh golly, I don't know if I wrote down what I'm stitching this on. I did not. It kind of looks like straw again, but I know this is 40 count and this is where I am. It has some specialty stitches. I'm not sure why I put it down. It's one of those that has a lot of stitching even though it's not very big. But I definitely need to get back to it. So I'm working on the grass, need to do the tree. I have a lot done, but then on the other hand, I have a lot not done. Um, I had a little dilemma on what color I wanted to do the words. They look black, but the color it calls for is that dark green. So I decided to do it as it's charted in the dark green. So maybe when I finish Brick House Sampler, this will be one that I will get back with. This is um, a bag that was given to me by Faye Rigsby, and it has a little pouch that goes with it. That was a very sweet gesture. Thank you, Faye. Beautiful. Her work is phenomenal in her finishing. She is... Uh, Carolina Stitcher. I almost didn't include this one because I don't have a lot finished on this, but I do love it and I want to get back to it. And this is I Had a Father Kind and True by Cross Stitch Antiques, Kathleen Littleton. Also called Alice Clark, 1844. And this one I need to take a working copy because it's these big pages. And I have found in the past pages like this that get folded a lot. They're over, you know, like right at the fold line. You end up losing some of the print, so it's hard to see. I have not worked anymore on this. I'm still on the border. This is 46 Count Old Sheep by XJU Design, and this is where I am. It's a big one. This is the one I want to put in that repurposed frame. I showed you that a few videos ago. Came from my daughter's house and my husband made a new frame for the mirror and the old frame is gold and so I'll eventually finish that and he will get the frame ready. And getting it pinned and laced and all that will be the challenge. This is another one that I started a long time ago and I have no excuse. This is a Stitch Folk bag. 
beautiful as always. Barry also now has t-shirts and um, sweatshirts and bags. So Barry of Stitch Folk on Etsy. She has a lot of options of fun things to get. I don't wear t-shirts a lot. Sometimes they come up too high on my neck. <laughs> and it's hot and I just, I just don't wear them as much. Sometimes I'll wear them like to sleep in. And that is really more information than you really need to know. <laughs> but this particular one is Mary Gibson. 1824 sampler by the Hasselmeyer Museum. It was charted for DMC and I've changed it to silk and I'm constantly, you know, kind of questioning my choices on the colors. But I, I, I just need to go with it. I just need to get it done. Mostly I've used NPI, but I have, I do have a few of Arisois and a few, um, Belsois. I'm doing this on 40 count pecan butter by Lakeside. I have quite a bit of Lakeside and the reason I have quite a bit of Lakeside is my friend Ruth who's taught me almost everything there is to know about um, about linens because she's worked at two different not here in Jacksonville but well yeah in here in Jacksonville she's worked at two or three different cross stitch stores and I think we started stitching together it's 10 plus years ago and at the time, she was a big fan of both Legacy by Access Commodities and Lakeside Linen. And she said, you need to buy as much as you can get. And at that time, it was pretty easy to get on one, two, three stitch. You know, you could get Lakeside Linen. Now, it's like you have to have an either an inside, <laughs> an inside trader <laughs> to give you the heads up. Another thing you can do, you know, you can call various big shops and just say, you know, next time you have Lakeside Linen in, please give me a call. But I've tried the notify me when it comes in, like on 123 Stitch, and you could wait. There's still some colors I'm waiting on from traditional stitches that I think I've put in, I want them maybe three years ago, which is fine because they don't charge you ahead of time. So whenever they get it, it's whenever they get it. And they do occasionally get it. So anyway, these are the silks I'm using. So this is Mary Gibson. I have the border finished. Some of the vine, some of the, it's just really at the beginning. I'm sorry for the wrinkles. And I love this. And this is another one that you can find on that hashtag on Instagram. I mean, there's over a thousand posts. So there's pretty much any sampler you want to find. It's going to be in there somewhere. Maybe. Okay, the next one. This is shameful. <laughs> I guess they're all kind of shameful. This is a Stacy Nash. I've shown you this one before. It's just a simple little red marking sampler. How hard can that be? This might be the one I do right after I finish the Brick House Sampler because it's so simple. And I just have a little start on it. I actually made this for somebody as a gift and then I decide to stitch it for myself. Well, you know what happens when you decide to stitch one for yourself. You've already stitched it once and it's like not as new and exciting. And this actually calls for you to get a big piece of linen and then stitch this on the back. I didn't do that, but I could easily use a different or another piece of linen for the back. And there's a hanging thread, so I apologize. And this is where I am on this one. I mean, I'm just going to make a pillow. I'm going to age it with some walnut crust crystals just for fun because it's a good small piece that I can use for that. And I'm using Silken Colors number, no, it's called In the Reds. It's pretty bright red. The next one, I'm sure I made a promise that I was going to finish this for my daughter for Christmas. This one is La Di Da, Wake My Soul and Sing. And then her birthday's in January, so when I didn't get it done for Christmas, I thought, oh, I'll make it for her birthday in January. And I didn't get it done for that either. 
the border's not challenging, but it's a little bit tedious. I was, I was watching um, Lisa Kindred Stitcher, and she said when she, when she does floss tube, she ends up with bags like this that obviously a chart was in, and she ends up with extra bags at the end of her floss tube. I do the same thing. I just save them because one of these days it'll pop up which one doesn't have a bag. Anyway, you kind of alternate three and three on the border on this, but then there's spaces in between, and it's kind of easy to get off. But here's where I am. This is just shameful. Just shame, shame, shame. So I guess we'll go for Christmas this year. Or I thought I should probably make it for my sister. This is a piece of 36 count fresco. I picture this plus and it's a huge piece. So I'll have plenty of linen left to do something else. I don't always cut my linen until I'm for sure know the border situation because I have cut it too short a time or two, which is kind of scary. I'm not sure who sent me this bag. This is that lovely William Morris fabric, which I think Hobby House is now carrying. There's Hobby House Quilt Works now. And I think I saw an email that they're now carrying a bunch of the William Morris fabric, which is gorgeous. Here's another one that I promised myself I was going to do one a month. And I've only done two in how many years? And this, this is the bags we all love to hate. Okay. This is the Jenny Bean for the Parlor series by Shakespeare's Peddler. I don't have a complete picture of the whole thing. But it ends up being 170 stitches by 170 by 810. And I'm doing it on 36 count Wren which is the called for, and these are the over cotton threads. I've done two of the eight sections. Cindy, which is um, Quirks, she's Lee Sin, L-E-E-S-C-I-N on um, Instagram. She is Jen Quirks and Stitches mom. And they do their 24 hours of cross stitch together and she has this finished and framed and it's gorgeous so the next one that I will be doing is Noah's Ark so this is not something that I'm going to work on till I'm till it's done but I certainly need to get at least one more section done actually two if I get two done by the end of the year then it would be half finished this is a bag I made myself. It's kind of flimsy. But I can criticize my own bags. Did I say I'm using 40, uh, 36 count Wren? Because if I didn't, I should have because that's what I'm using. The next one, his, his eye is on the sparrow. And this, for a while, this was my Sunday stitch. I do have quite a bit of this finished. I guess you can't really say the top is half because the bottom is larger, but I have the top portion almost finished. I love this piece and I need to work on it. I also have Consider the Lilies in here. So this is his eyes on the sparrow. This is the companion, Consider the Lilies. I have not started Consider the Lilies. Not that I might not, but I kind of wanted to finish his eyes on the sparrow first. So his eyes on the sparrow I'm doing on 36 count Heartland. Here's all the colors. Love it. I think Consider the Lilies is a little bit brighter of colors. The original 
ones that Beth, they're by Heartstring Sampler. The original <coughs> ones Beth did, I think were on 28 count. So this is where I am. I went down a little bit on the side flowers. And I just have this kind of section right up here and then I'll have the top portion finished. So what I might do is um, alternate like that Peaceful Paradise, the uh, Seven Days of Creation, and this one for my Sunday stitch. Which kind of means I'd only work on it once a month. But I, maybe that's okay. Better than none. I don't know. I don't really have a plan. I just want to get these whips, at least some more progress on them. I mean, I don't have, I could do the five for five, but I don't know which ones I'd pick. <laughs> I almost didn't show this one because I don't have very much finished at all. I kind of did a start and that was it. But this is the Rose Wreath by GGR and a lot of people are stitching this. Um, Narissa in New Zealand, Narissa Stitching Lifestyle is doing this. It's gorgeous gorgeous um, I think Lisa Kindred Stitcher has finished it I'm pretty sure she's finished it and I just have a little start let's see what I'm doing this one on 40 count parchment by weeks <clears throat> and I have a little bit of a start on the border this is the one a few videos ago I asked whether you like the color of the red flower that's more muted or brighter so I went all the way down I don't know if you can see that all the way around to the corner on the bottom so it's pretty big and I love this so again have a drink I want to get back to it I've decided I'm going to use the brighter color. So the two choices, one was Claret and one was Rose Garden. I have enough skeins of either one. The top one is the Rose Garden, the bottom is the Claret. Claret's a little more of a uh, wine colored. Rose Garden is just a little more muted. Same basic color, but a little more muted. And I've loved this piece since Reese from Australia. I think she's in Australia, not New Zealand. She showed this on like her first video and I was like, agog. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that is so fabulous. She had it finished. I saw a post somewhere that said Reese might be coming back to floss too. Please do. <laughs> we miss your seeing your beautiful stitching. This next one is Little Birds by Blackbird. I'll take it out of the package. This one came out in 2019. I don't have a lot finished, but Blackbird is always comfort stitching to me. And I've, I've told you before, I could stitch just Blackbird for the rest of my life and never probably touch all of the ones that I have. Maybe. Depends on how long I live. <laughs> I live to be 95 and I'm still stitching. Maybe. I don't know. But here's the overdyed cottons for that. And I just have a little bit of the border. I've gone almost all the way around on the border. I still have to do a little on the bottom. It's not small. Um, I think Daisy, Christy Daisy Case Primitives is, I don't think she finished it. I think she's still working on this one too. And this one is on um, 40 Count Legacy by Picture This Plus. There's Legacy the Color by Picture This Plus. Then there's Legacy the Fabric, which is by Access Com Commodities and comes in different colors. Each count has different colors of the legacy linen. 
This is Picture This Plus. And Legacy could be different counts on that too. But I'm trying to say is the Legacy um, linens by Excess Commodities, like they have odd counts, like they have 37, 38. Um, they don't have your standard because it's not Zweigart linen. So they don't have your standard 36, 40, etc. Does that make sense? Okay. The next one, and I, I was kind of shamed on this when I was at Country Sampler. I was talking to Pam, who works at Country Sampler. And there was a gentleman there who stitches. He's very, very nice. And somehow we got to talking about um, my Ann Grimshaw, or just Ann Grim Quaker samplers, Ann Grimshaw. And he said, you sure have been working on that a long time. I'm like, I know. Five years to be exact. I started on this on 2018. Ann Grimshaw, 1818. I know I started in 2018 because Kitten Stitcher Teresa started the same time and we started 200 years after this was originally stitched by the little girl. Now I am a lot closer. I got a lot done on my five for five during May. And if you want to um, know about that, you might be interested in going back to my five by five video, which I think I did at the end of April. Anyway. Um, you say 200 years yeah. since she did it? Yeah. You're on track for No, but she finished it 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, but you're on track to finish it in 200 years. Well, hopefully before then. I have quite a bit finished, and I really only need to do the bottom Ooh, that's pretty Quakers in the bottom alphabet. Well, I take that back. There's also capital letters around, kind of interspersed, and they're done with eyelet stitches, so I need to do those too. I'm gonna take a short break to reheat my coffee in the microwave, which I really don't like to do, but I want hot coffee. I'm gonna take a short break and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm back. I failed to say that on um, Ann Grimshaw, I'm using 36 count uh, pecan butter by Lakeside, and I'm stitching it with the antique black Gloriana threads. And it is gorgeous. While I was taking the break, my husband said, well, that would motivate me to get it done because you've got so much finished. That's right. Because it's beautiful. And it is beautiful. Okay, next one. This is my long languishing Ann Rayner. The chart is no longer available. I just need to power through this. I'm not sure what is stalling me. If I had a specific, I know at first I was really back and forth on the colors that I wanted to use. There's a couple different conversions out there. Paulette from Plum Street did one, put it on her blog. Um, somebody else did one, but this is Ann Rayner. It is long gone, not available. The only way you're gonna find it is on the um, secondary market, and even that might be um, a challenge to find. But if you love it, Sarah Stewart Hardiman by Needlework Press is very, very similar. Ann Rayner. I finally settled on the colors I'm using, which is NPI, plus it's a horrible chart. Look at how dark that is. It's just a horrible chart. And I could probably take it somewhere and have it brightened, I don't know. I don't stitch on any kind of a device. If I did, maybe that would 
make it easier? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure where I got this bag. This one that Ann Grimshaw was in is a wishing thorn bag. This one that I had prior to that was um, Blackbird Fabric, and it was by Christy Crosshatch Quilts. I almost think this was a Stitch Folk bag, but I'm not, I don't know. She doesn't usually put handles, and she usually has her logo on it, so I'm not sure who that's by. But Ann Rayner, I mean, I do have quite a bit finished. I just need to, it's, I'm doing it on 46 count. And I have decided to, and this is 46 count buttercream by Lakeside. And I've changed the reds. I have like two different greens I'm using. One green that's on the border, another green that's going to be the grass. Even though the chart calls for one green. So I have a lot of like caveats with this. Which may be part of my problem. But once I get started on the grass and get the house, this may be one that I take with me to that retreat here in Jacksonville just to do fill in. Although 46 counts a little hard to stitch with socially. <laughs> social stitching, as Susan Aki calls it. She said, I'm not good at social stitching. <laughs> She's funny. Anyway, here's the collection of threads. And the piece of paper that I have is so I need to rewrite it because it's so jumbled with what threads I'm using. On the over one, I'm going to be using a Vera Swa, Swa Serfine. It's a finer, F-I-N-E-R, finer, thinner thread for the over one, especially on the 46 count. The next two are ones that you've seen many, many, many times. I need to make progress. The first one is Jane Atkinson by The Scarlet Letter. Whew. I'm flashing. And the air conditioner's running, so. Anyway, Jane Atkinson by The Scarlet Letter. Although I was pleased when I went back and watched that video from a couple years ago. I only had the top flowers, so I have made definite progress. And this is a Stitch Folk bag. Barry makes gorgeous bags. So Jane Atkinson is on 40 Count Lentil by Lakeside. And this is where I am. So once I get that bottom row of flowers, and again, this would be a good one to work on. Socially, because you can outline and then fill in. And for this one, I'm using the called for um, a Vera Soie, Soie d'Alger. Soie d'Alger is the one in the skeins. So there's Soie d'Alger. There's lots of different A Vera Soie, but A Vera Soie, Soie d'Alger is the, um, it looks like Soie, looks like Soy d'Alger, <laughs> but it's pronounced Soie d'Alger because, you know, I'm French. <laughs> I took Spanish in high school. Anyway, um, then there's uh, the 103, which is on the spools, and then there's Swasserfine, and there's others too. But those are the three that I've primarily stitched with. These were the called for. Scarlet Letter gives you an option. Um, to do DMC or um, Swa J. The other one in this bag is um, Elizabeth Cheatham, also by Scarlet Letter. I was fortunate to see the finished piece of Anne Klipsick, and she has it on. Um, it's a model stitch at Lens of Madison, and this is where I am on this one. Again, this one has, um, and I'm doing... 40 count, what is this done on? 
pretty sure it's a seraphim. But let's just see. It is Prairie Grass by Seraphim. And you can see up here in this corner where I've started the satin stitch. Right here. But I'll wait to finish that until the very end. It's kind of a light peach color. There's quite a bit of satin stitch on these. So those are two that will be ongoing, but I need to make progress. This next one is a Brenda Gervais, Mary Ann Kopp, K-O-P-P. -P. And this one is in a Penny and Toonie bag with the Blackbird fabric. And they're on Etsy, Mary Ann Kopp by Brenda Gervais. Here's the antique. And I am using um, the Vicki Clayton silks for this one. Um, what's her name? Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher, I think, has also started this, and she's using the overdyed. But I'm using the Vicki Clayton silks, and I really am enjoying this, so I need to get back to it. And where's the piece? Right here. That's all I have done. So I've gone across the top, headed down with the border, put in a few flowers just for fun. And this is being done on um, American Chestnut 40 Count by R&R Fabrics. Very pretty. I like the American Chestnut too. It has just enough of a tannish or kind of brownish tone. The next one is Anne Ufendel by Hands Across the Sea. I also have the book that has the Isabella, her sister, on the other side. I've seen this before. I actually also have Isabella kitted in here. So someday after I finish and I will do Isabella. Okay, and this one I'm doing on, let's see what the called for was. I need to write it on the tag. It helps if I write it on the tag. This is Lakeside Pecan Butter again. I love Pecan Butter. I don't have very, that's probably one of the colors I don't have very much of. Again, it's 40 count. And I have the border, all the bones of the border all the way around. I'm working on the top band. And I know I'm missing one of the buds on the tree there. I saw it and I just haven't. I'm missing one of the buds and I just haven't fixed it. On that first tree. I do enjoy stitching on this, so it's just a matter I need to spend some time on it. I'm getting toward the end. Aren't you excited? This next one is by Plum Street. It's Brother's Keeper. I also call it Cain and Abel. Another one that could be a Sunday stitch. Sometimes I don't stitch as much on Sunday. I ought to make them like take two of um you know the the three other ones that i showed you and so his eyes on the sparrow uh, seven days of creation and peaceful paradise and make and add this one and do two on saturdays and two on sundays the problem i have with just setting one day aside is i get going on it and then i don't want to stop so then it blends into Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, <laughs> which is not a bad thing because you make progress. And this is the overdyed cottons that it calls for. And I have the first block done. There's 10 blocks all together. I've gone all the way across. And this one is being done on 36 count vintage exemplar. 
there's quite a bit of over one on this. You wouldn't think there is, but there is. A lot of the different things are over one. A lot of the verse, not all of the verses, but some of the verse is over one. Kind of has a hawk run hollow feel. So the word Genesis 4, 1 through 16 is all over one on the first block. And that's in a wonderful Amazon bag or wherever I got it from. I have a couple more left and then I'm going to let you go. This is another Scarlet Letter. This is the New England sampler. Um, Teresa Kitten Stitcher did this and I just loved it. And so I got the chart. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count, um, just a second, what is the name of this? Seaweed by Fox and Rabbit. Now, this is a really tight 40 count. To me, it feels more like 46. It's not gonna be very big, but this is really close to the colors of this originally done by the little girl on um, Lindsay Woolsey. But I got to the second alphabet here and it's all eyelets and it's just a little challenging. I need to up my glasses, my strength of my glasses to be able to see it because it's all eyelets on that alphabet. I'm using a Vera Soie, Soie Loger. This is a um, Bella Rose Needle Arts bag that was gifted to me. So that's another one that I need to get back to. With a few exceptions, most of these have pretty much progress. Two more. The next one is Manor at Quaker Hill. And for a while, everyone was stitching this. But recently, I haven't seen very many stitching. I guess everybody's done with it but me. Manor at Quaker Hill by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This came out a couple years ago. I love this piece. I don't know what my reason for not getting back to it is. Um... I'm stitching this one on 40 count fawn by Lakeside. Somebody asked me how I tag my projects. I use these little, you know, some of them don't have the metal band, but they're just label tags. And I put what the project is so I know where these threads go. <laughs> Otherwise, if they get separated and I don't put a tag, then I'm up a creek without a paddle. But, and then I, now this one, I wrote it on the front. Normally I write it on the back, but whatever. Um, I write the linen color and count. So this is where I am on this one. I've gone all the way across the top with the border. I haven't done the flowers on the border. Going down the side. This will be gorgeous when it's done. So this is another one that, I mean, it's going to take a while. It's not a, it's, it's loaded with motifs. And I think it has some over one. Brenda Gervais kind of slips some over one in sometimes. So, you know, I have a lot left to do, but I also have enough progress that it's motivating to go back to finish it. And then the last one that I'm going to show you is, I think I've shown you everything. I started this one this year and I need to finish it. This is Ann Sandals. This is an older reproduction pattern by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Brenda Gervais does have a website, Country Stitches Online, but she just moved. They moved to a different town. 
So I'm not sure when she'll reopen her shop. And this one is really just the bones. I have some of the flowers done. It's not huge, so this will be a nice small sampler. And sandals. And this one I'm using, oops, where's the threads for that? Uh-oh. Well, that's a good question, where the threads are. Not those. <laughs> oh, here they are. 40 count light exemplar, my light side. It's very pretty. I really want to get back to it. These flowers are gorgeous. So that is all I have. Um, that's enough. <laughs> I need to hire somebody to live in a closet and just come out and do finishing and framing. Because I also have a lot. Did I say a lot? I have a lot of pieces that are finished but not framed. Maybe next time I'll show you those. I've shown them to you before, so it might be boring, but... One of my friends said, oh yeah, show them again. We forget what happened a day ago, let alone six months ago or whenever you showed them last. So anyway, I hope you all doing well. Um, I know the other side of the world is starting to get cold and we're st or starting getting out of winter and we're in summer, right? They're opposite. So we're in the middle of summer, they're in the middle of winter as we start into fall they'll be starting into spring i think that's how it works in like down under australia and all that um i just want to mention one floss tubers i've watched quite a few but this is the one i really wanted to mention i have favorites and sometimes i'll miss a video that they put out and then i'll watch that and then i think you know i really enjoy watching them i think i'll go back and binge four or five of their videos and that I, ones that I've already watched, and then I'll rewatch them. And that is uh, Marlene, Stitching by the Lake. Marlene has been doing videos longer than I have, and I started June of 2018, so five years I've been doing. I've really done over 100, but some of them are quilt videos, but I've done obviously 98 of regular floss tube videos, but um, she's done a lot more, and she's just, she is one of the few people that I could honestly say loves everybody. She loves people. She is, she's almost perfect. <laughs> Not really, but I love listening to Marlene. I love listening to her sweet accent. She's from Little Rock, Arkansas, and um, she's just a joy to watch. So if you're watching somebody and you're like well let me think what am i going to watch next you know go back and watch a lot of her older videos because she's just a joy she's i've met her multiple times at retreats and she is just a, the most pleasant person to be around so i miss you marlene i hope to see you sometime this year maybe at quilter station in the fall i'll see you but um i so enjoy your videos so go watch marlene and um like and subscribe and all that good stuff so thank you for watching hope you all are having a good day and um i will be back at some point love you bye <laughs>